we begin with our chief political anchor, Brett Baer, who's with me. He's going to be here throughout the hour, of course, host of Special Report. We thought this was going to be a close race, but I don't think anyone had that it was going to be within 100 votes. No, 95 votes right now separate these two candidates. And you have uh, precincts where the Republican, Saccone, should be doing a better, still two precincts out in Washington uh, County that have yet to be counted. Uh, you have 95 votes. You have 1,200 absentee ballots in Washington. In that, that one county. In that one county that will not be counted until tomorrow right. morning, we're told, by a officials at this hour, and you have about 1,100 in Allegheny County that will be counted within the next 14 minutes. Okay. They're already in the computer, and they're supposed to be downloaded within the next 14 minutes. But big picture, and you've been reporting on this, there's somewhere around six or 7,000 total absentee ballots scanning these counties that we're showing right now. Some we'll see, as you say, in the next 15 minutes or so, but many of these, we expect, will actually be tabulated, counted, and reported out tomorrow. So we, we are unlikely to know the winner tonight. Washington and Greene counties are already saying that they can't get the absentee ballots counted tonight, and it will be tomorrow morning. So you're probably going to be in a situation where we're not going to know until tomorrow morning, if we know then. Remember that this is not a statewide race, so it's not an automatic recount. Mm -hmm. But either campaign can trigger a recount by getting three voters in each precinct uh, to sign a form and say, we want a recount. And if they're willing to pay for it, then the state law basically says there'll be a recount. Right. And you would expect it with this close, it's likely. Yes, but <laughs> here's the other thing, is that this district, as we've been talking about all night, has been redrawn. And, and if it holds up in the courts, this district will no longer be around by November. So we're spending millions, they're spending millions and millions of dollars on both sides, and yet this, this seat is blowing up. We're going to go live in a moment to... Uh, the district, but I just want to get big picture from you first, Brett. Which is, you know, look, th this is a fight for the not just for a seat, but a fight for a narrative. And you have Democrats talking about a blue wave, um, and they have something to be said for the fact that Donald Trump carried this district by 20 points right. in 2016. Plus, he added the tax cut and the tariffs, so people have fatter paychecks. And the tariffs were aimed at this district in particular. So even if the Republicans pull it out, it's been a struggle. It may not be a giant blue wave, but it's definitely more than a ripple because uh, you have a district where Trump won by 20 points and white working class voters voted for the Democrat. Now, this is not the Democrat that you've seen across the country uh, as far as being more progressive as the party has leaned towards Bernie Sanders and right. Elizabeth Warren. This is a Democrat who campaigned on gun rights, who is pro-tax law, who is uh, basically with the unions on the tariffs, and is somebody who ran away from Nancy Pelosi and didn't want any Hollywood stars right. in this campaign, unlike that Georgia race we saw earlier. All right, Brett, stand by. Our chief political anchor is here. He's got the pencil out. He's got the iPhone. He's literally tabulating votes as we speak. But I want to go to Saccone headquarters. That's a Republican candidate in Elizabeth Township, Pennsylvania. Uh, we'll give Brett a chance to dig into the numbers while our own Molly Lyon is standing by. What are you seeing on the ground there, Molly? Is there excitement at the Saccone headquarters? He's been behind the whole night, and yet now, at this late hour, he's closer than he's ever been. I think you may be able to hear some of the cheers behind me, Ed. Uh, great to be with you tonight. Uh, they remain hopeful here on the ground here at the Saccone headquarters, here at the Saccone uh, camp. Uh, we've been hearing chants of Rick throughout the evening as the numbers get closer and closer. Uh, within the last hour, one of the uh, officials jumped up on stage and said things were within a couple hundred votes. And we just heard Red Bear, their report, that it was now down to 95. You could hear a cheer go up as those numbers get closer. I want to contribute a little bit to what Brett was talking about, what I'm hearing from officials and sources here on the ground as far as things not being over this evening, potentially not being over even as we enter tomorrow morning and into the next potentially couple of days. I'm hearing on the, here on the ground that things may very well turn on absentee ballots, that there could potentially be thousands of absentee ballots still out there, and that some of the most interesting action, where some of the most interesting counting and numbers could come in the days to come is Washington County. Of course, that's been very close as we've seen these returns coming in, and that may very well be a place where we could see election lawyers gathering uh, tomorrow morning to get a close look at these absentee ballots. Uh, you know, you talked about a narrative, Ed, and what we've seen here in the district just within the last week has been an incredible all-hands-on-deck approach on the part of Republicans, on the part of the GOP, and the president and his family. The president, of course, making two stops here in the district over the course of this campaign. He came on Saturday holding a big rally. Also here in the district over the course of the last months and weeks, the vice president, Vice President Mike Pence, the first daughter. Donald Trump Jr. made a stop here yesterday 
yesterday and also Councilor the President Kellyanne Conway. It really speaks to the commitment, the investment that is made in this candidate, State Rep. Rick Sacone, the Republican in this race. On the Democratic side, Joe Biden, the former Vice President, made a stop here. And you both, you've been talking about organized labor and the potential influence of organized labor. And if Lamb pulls off a victory or even comes in very, very close to pulling off a victory, there is some sentiment that this could be seen on Democratic circles as a major win regardless. Uh, the senator from Pennsylvania, Bob Casey, saying that essentially this was a close race to watch, a bellwether, in fact, uh, concerning a potential win that it could be very a very telling indicator that people want change. So I think as the days go forward, regardless of whether or not we get a winner tonight or tomorrow morning or the day after, we may hear a narrative developing from Democrats that this could be seen as a success from their circles. Ed? Well, Molly, about two hours or so ago, we were getting your reports suggesting on the ground that some of the Saccone folks were going home. Some might have been disappointed because he was behind. Others just didn't want to stay up all night. As you can see behind you, there's excitement there for electricity for the first time. They believe maybe he does have a shot. So talk about that. But also, are you getting any information on the ground about a time frame? Uh, is this all just kind of up in the air, or is there a sense that by noon tomorrow, they'll have the ballots counted. Is it by 3 p.m.? Any sense of where we're headed? On both those points, I have not seen people trickling out of this room throughout the night. I think the crowd has pretty much stuck around. We saw a few children leave a few minutes ago, but other than that, the adults seem to be sticking around. Uh, still seem to be a lot of excitement, a lot of smiles on faces. So I don't think they've given up hope here in the Saccone camp. As far as when this could potentially be over, what I'm really getting is some insight into this really unlikely to be over tonight, probably not tomorrow, and potentially could take days. So they really seem like they're looking at these absentee ballots, and it may take a little while to get the job done. Ed? All right, Molly, we'll get back to you in a moment. We're going to get to Brett in a moment as well. But I want to now deal in Chris Steyerwalt, uh, FoxNews.com uh, political editor, uh, man about town. Or something. Or some, some sort of something. Like yeah, I might have gotten the title wrong, but uh, we're just kind of going with it right now because this it. is kind of a wild story, to say the least. Doctor, what say you? Uh, this is what I live for. This is like the this is the best. You are down to the very end. We just got a bunch of vote dumped in uh, Allegheny County vote. Connor Lamb put his margin back up to about 850 votes. The same bandwidth where we've seen him the whole time. Um, but as you guys were talking about before, Washington County, which is partly suburban Pittsburgh on the northern side and on the eastern side, but also is coal country. There are plenty of votes for both of these candidates in Washington County. When the absentees get counted tomorrow, this thing could really, 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 really go either way. This is pretty remarkable when you think about it. Wow. Uh, Chris, what was your sense as well in some of the models we talked about last night? The Monmouth University poll was suggesting that uh, everybody was saying, oh, you know, Saccone, the Republican, can't possibly win. But that had different models three different models of who might show up. What's your sense of who actually showed up tonight? Well, my first sense is that the pollsters at Monmouth should start picking uh, polls instead of saying it could be one of 11 different things. And mm -hmm. if somebody wears a baseball cap and whatever else, it's a bunch of silly business and they ought to pick. We do, so should they. The other thing is uh, this race is whatever else happens. So I care about this stuff as a political nerd. I care about these individual things and these counties and this stuff. But in the larger motif, it's all fitting into a piece. Brett mentioned it earlier, and it's very true. The average advantage for Democrats in races compared to the 2016 performance is 16 points. That's how much uh, Democrats are doing better. They've, they have done better in these districts and these races than Hillary Clinton did and Democrats did in 2016. 16 points. This is 20 points. This wow. is a 20 point improvement. So that is the, the, the larger the meta takeaway here is uh, it's more than a ripple. It might be a wave. That's a pretty big number. So how nervous, Brett, let me bring Brett in as well, and we'll go back to Chris in a moment. Brett, how nervous should Republicans be tonight that even if they pull this out, uh, you know, Chris is sort of talking about Democrats have a lot of energy. They do. And and in this particular district, uh, you know, as far as being a bellwether, I don't know if that's the case. Both uh, parties spending a lot of money on this one race. Uh, you have a lot of factors that could change between now and November, but clearly enthusiasm is on the Democratic side, and you can't discount that. This candidate, though, is different. 
Um, and Connor Lamb ran a really great race. He out fundraised uh, Sacone five to one. Right. He was uh, just better on the stump. He's Former a Marine. Marine says he's not going to vote for Speaker old. Pelosi. I mean, he ran away from Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. This is this is kind of a different animal. Another factor is a libertarian candidate who pretty much none of us were talking about, and he's on Twitter tonight saying that maybe he's going to decide this race. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, Drew uh, Gray Miller tweeted, we're only a few hours away from me being the most hated man in America, hashtag PA18. <laughs> he has 1,337 votes, and obviously the spread here is now about 800 uh, between the two. Now, I tweeted that earlier yeah. saying, just pointing it out, noting it, and people were like, well, of course it's going to go one way or the other. Libertarian votes come one way or the other. It doesn't matter. It's more than the difference yeah, of sure. the two. So if he's not in the race, those 1,300 votes go to the two who are within 1,300 votes of one another. So, Chris, the Libertarian candidate, did you see him coming? <laughs> yeah, we were tracking we were tracking him a bogey all the way in. Uh, the, and the thing to remember about third party votes yeah. is uh, they don't belong to either side. If you are willing to go out in foul weather in western Pennsylvania, if you're willing to go out and, and go vote and go vote for a libertarian candidate, you probably meant to. You probably meant to go mm -hmm. do that. You're probably not an available vote, vote to either party. Well, Al Gore for many years was pretty angry at Ralph Nader going back to the 2000 campaign. It wasn't just Bush v. Gore, but Ralph Nader in states like Florida helped tilt the balance. Uh, and, and pulled votes from Al Gore. This libertarian candidate, Brett, out of nowhere, may throw a race that is seen as a bellwether, whether it is or not. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the narrative, the spin after this. Republicans, yeah, they have reason to be jittery because of the turnout here for the Democrat. But if they win, it's less so. It feels better. If they lose, it's going to be heinous. You know, it's just not going to feel good. And uh, Democrats are going to run, you know, for the races and say this is indication of what November is going to show. So far, all the Allegheny absentees coming in, that means there's roughly about 3,200 absentees left. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned, Washington and Greene counties are places where Saccone should do better, but they're smaller precincts. So whether the votes equal some votes, but the number yeah. is really the question. Uh, Brett, and in terms of this whole idea of a Democratic wave, on the other hand, Democrats came close, but no cigar in four special elections for House seats, Georgia, Kansas, et cetera, uh, over the last year or so. That may happen again. Do Republicans have any hope coming out of this saying, you know what, it was tough, we're facing all these political headwinds, win or lose here. Saccone, who people inside the White House have told me in the last 48 hours, horrible candidate, not raising money, as you said. Is there some measure of victory, win or lose here for the White House, that the president went in there and helped tighten this race big time? He was down six, you know, six, eight points. Yeah, I, I think... Again, if he wins, it makes it a much more, a it much easier better. narrative to tell. Um, but I think that, um, but in a, in a district where the president won by 20, uh, they yeah. just can't, they can't look at these numbers and say, yippee. Right. But they can look at a candidate that is not the traditional Democratic candidate that you're seeing across the country and saying that the equation is going to point out that Nancy Pelosi was not a factor in this race for this candidate. And I would ma imagine that the House Minority Leader will be in a lot of ads for Republican candidates come November.